Hello friends, welcome to the next session of the function series. In this episode, we are going to talk about the quadratic functions, right? In the beginning of the function series, we talked about that when the degree of the function or the highest power of x is 1, it's a linear function and the shape of the linear function is a straight line. We talked about the y in the slope intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b. We also saw the different uh, types of the straight lines. It could be having a positive slope, a negative slope, and so on and so forth. Now let's talk about the quadratic function. Essentially, when the degree of the function is 2, as we discussed earlier, when the highest power of x is 2, it becomes a quadratic function and the shape of the function is like of a parabola or a necklace, right? Let's do a deep dive and understand some other aspects of, of, of that type of a quadratic function, okay? So the standard form of a quadratic function is given by y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So essentially, it has a x squared term, it may have a x term, it may have a c term, right? But mandatorily, it should have the x squared term because this is the term which is making this function of degree 2, correct? So a has to be non-zero, right? b could be 0, c could be 0, but a has to be non-zero because if a becomes 0, then the degree of the function becomes 1 and hence it will not be a quadratic function, right? So the first thing which we need to understand is that for the function to be a quadratic function, the x squared term should be present and hence a cannot be 0, right? Now, when a cannot be 0, it has to be either greater than 0 or less than 0, right? Let's see what, what can be infer out of those things. When a is less than 0, right, or negative, right, the shape of the parabola would be opening downward, right? So, this type of parabola would be something like this. It will, it will open downward, and we will see whether it will cut the x-axis in two points or whether it will just touch it at one point or whatever, but the point is that when a is negative, when the coefficient of x square, right, a is the coefficient of x square, when that is negative, then the parabola will be opening downward, that quadratic function will be opening downward, okay? When a is positive, when a is greater than zero, the parabola would be opening upward, right? So the moment we see this standard form equation, Depending upon whether A is positive or negative, we can immediately conclude whether it will open downward or upward, right? The other thing which I'm showing here on the board is C and I'm calling it as a y-intercept, right? If we recall, what's the definition of a y-intercept? Y-intercept is nothing but the point where any function cuts the y-axis, right? It could be a straight line or it could be a parabola or it could be even any other type of function but essentially the point where the function cuts the y-axis, right? So this point in this case is the y-intercept. This, this point here is the y-intercept. And essentially if you see y-intercept is nothing but the point where x is zero, right? Because the, on the y-axis, the value of x is zero, correct? Now, when x is zero, let's put x as zero in this equation. When x is zero, this term will go away. When x is zero, this term will also go away because zero times b will be zero. 0 square is 0 times a is 0, hence y will be equal to c, right? Hence, c is nothing but the y-intercept, or in other words, that is the value of the function when x is 0. Hence, it becomes the y-intercept, right? So just to reiterate, right, this is the standard form of a quadratic function, ax square plus bx plus c. a cannot be 0. It can be either less than 0 or greater than 0. If a is less than 0, the parabola or the quadratic function will open downward. If a is greater than 0 or positive, it will open upward and in this standard form c is nothing but it serves as the y-intercept because c is the value of the function or the value of y when x is zero right let's move on and let's also see some other types of forms for a quadratic function okay so let's try to analyze this quadratic function so let's say we have this function y is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 6 and let's see what can be infer out of this function correct so clearly it's a quadratic function because the highest power of x is 2 right now, if we compare this with our standard form, this becomes our a, right? Our b is minus 1, and our c is minus 6, correct? ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, we just saw that when a is positive or greater than 0, the parabola will open upward. So, in this case, this quadratic function of this parabola is going to open upward, right? We also saw that c is nothing but the y-intercept. Correct? 
because y-intercept is the point where the function will cut the will cut the y-axis, and at on the y-axis the value of x is zero. Hence, when we put the x equal to zero, we do get y equal to minus six. Hence, this is the y-intercept. So, if we were to draw this parabola, so far we know that the parabola is going to open upward, okay, and it's going to cut the y-axis or the y-intercept is minus six. So, let's say that this point is zero comma minus six. Correct. So our parabola is going to be, let's say something like this. Correct. So far so good. Now let's try to see if we can factor this quadratic function. Okay. So y is equal to two x square minus x minus six. Right. Uh, we have seen the grouping method earlier. So if we use the grouping method, we can say that minus four x and plus three x are going to be the two factors. Right. And then we can take two x common. We get x minus two. Here we take three common. We get x minus two, and essentially we get two x plus three times x minus two, right? So in this case, as we just saw, we are able to completely factor out this quadratic function, and this is how it looks in the factored form. Correct. So this is essentially the same thing as this. Okay. Now. Let's try to find the x-intercept. X-intercepts are nothing but the points where the value of y is zero. So when we put this value of y is zero, we get the two values of x. One is minus three over two, and the other is two. Right. So these are the two points where it will cut the uh, x-axis. Right. So minus three comma two. So this point would be minus three comma over two comma zero. And the other point, x-intercept, would be two comma zero, right? So so far, we are also able to find the x-intercept. We already knew the y-intercept, and we know that this parabola is going to open upward, right? Now let's talk about the vertex and see if we can find the coordinates of the vertex, right? This is the vertex of the parabola, correct? We know that the vertex passes through the axis of symmetry, right? So there is an axis of symmetry. Right, along which the parabola will be symmetrical, correct? Now, if we notice, this axis of symmetry will pass through the midpoint of these two points, correct? So, if we find the midpoint of the two intercepts, we can find the x-coordinate of this point, right? And how do we find the midpoint? By taking the average or the mean of the two endpoints. So, in this case, we will do minus three over two plus two divided by two, right? This is the mean or the average of the two endpoints, which is nothing but one over four. So essentially, we know that the x-intercept of the of this point is one over four, right? And which will be the same for the vertex as well. So the x-coordinate of this vertex is one over four, comma y. We still don't know the value of y here, but we can plug in the value of x here in this function and find the corresponding value of y. And that will give us the complete coordinate of the vertex, right? So just to quickly reiterate, we had this function. We saw that the value of a was greater than zero, hence it's going to open upward. The value of c was negative six, so we know that the y-intercept is going to be uh, negative six, zero comma negative six. We factored this function and we got this. Now to find the x-intercepts, we're going to put y equal to zero. When we put y equal to zero, we got the two values of x. Those are nothing but the two solutions of the quadratic function, or the two x-intercepts, right? The points where the parabola will cut the x-axis. So these were the two points which we got: two comma zero and minus three comma over two comma zero. And we took the midpoint of those two points to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once we got the x-coordinate of the vertex, we can plug in this point here to find the corresponding value of y, right? So very quickly, we are able to analyze. How the shape of the parabola would be, what would be the y-intercepts, and what would be the x-intercepts. In fact, what would be the coordinate of the vertex as well? Okay, let's move on to the second uh, form of a quadratic function. Right, we just saw that a quadratic function can be written in the standard form: y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Right, it can also be written in another form called as a roots form. Right, y is equal to a times x minus x1 times x minus x2. What are these x1 and x2s here? This x1 and x2 are nothing but the two x-intercepts, right? Or the two roots 
of the function. And that's why this form is called as the roots form because it directly gives you the true roots of the function. Let's take a simple example, right? So let's say that we have a function y is equal to 2, x minus 3, x minus 7. Correct? Now, if we have to find the x-intercepts, how do we find the x-intercepts? We put the value of y as 0. So we will put the value of y as 0 here. Correct? We divide by 2 on both sides. Right? We divide by 2. This 2 into get cancelled. 0 over 2 is again 0. Right? So essentially, we get x minus 3 times x minus 7 is equal to 0, which will give us x equal to 3 and x equal to 7. Correct? So essentially, these are the two points, right, where the value of y is 0, or these are the two roots of the function, or these are the two x-intercepts of the function, correct? Once we have the two x-intercepts of the function, we can take their midpoint and find the x-coordinate of the vertex, as we just saw in the previous example. So basically, this is a much easier form, because if we really recall, in the previous example, we had to factor the quadratic function to bring it to this form and then find the x-intercept. But if someone is directly giving us this form, it's much easier because we directly off the bat can find the two x-intercepts, right? Okay, let's talk about the third form of a quadratic function, right? We saw the standard form, we saw the roots form. Now there is something called as the vertex form of the parabola as well, or the quadratic function. And the reason why it's called as the vertex form because this form directly gives us the coordinates of the vertex, right? And the vertex form is like a times x minus h whole square plus k. And in this situation, h comma k is the vertex of the parabola. We have to be mindful of the signs here. For example, if I were to talk about y is equal to minus 2, x plus 5 whole square minus 7. Right? And I were to ask, okay, what is the vertex of this parabola and what can we infer out of the parabola, right? So the first thing is that our a is negative, right? So if a is negative, the parabola is going to open downward, right? It is directly into the vertex form. Hence, if we try to rewrite in this form, it will be minus two, x minus of minus five, minus seven. Because I have to exactly write it in this form. There has to be a minus here and then the h. So x minus of minus 5 whole square to minus 7 because I have to get plus 5 here. Hence, the vertex would be minus 5 comma minus 7, right? So it's a parabola which is going to open downward with a vertex at minus 5 comma minus 7. Okay, let's quickly talk about how to solve a quadratic function which we have seen earlier as well. So let, let's say that we have this quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and we were to solve it, right? Basically find the two solutions of x, right? We can do the grouping method as we just saw in the previous example or we could even use the quadratic formula method which is nothing but it gives minus b plus of square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a and the second root is given by minus b minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a. Right? So this is something which we have seen I'm just kind of reiterating there that when we are solving this quadratic function and we are finding the two solutions or two values of x what is that we are essentially solving? What we are actually getting the two x-intercepts, right? Because this is our function, and we are saying that this function is equal to zero. It means that the value of y is zero. It means that we are solving for the x-intercepts, right? So anybody could say that, okay, find the two roots of this function equation, or the two solutions of this equation, or the two x-intercepts, it's the same thing. Essentially, we are finding the x-intercepts, or the point where this quadratic function, or the parabola, will be cutting the x-axis, right? Now it's not necessary that the parabola will cut it in the uh, cut the x-axis at two points. It could just touch at one point. It could not even cut the x-axis at all, and that is all governed by this entity here, b square minus four ac, which is called as the discriminant, right? So if b square minus four ac is going to be less than zero, right? Suppose the values of a, b, and c are such that the final value of b square minus 4ac is coming out to be less than 0, then obviously the square root of a negative number is not defined, and hence we will not have the true real values of x, right? When b square minus 4ac will be equal to 0, right? If you see these two formulas closely, right, they will essentially be the same, right? Because the only difference in the two 
roots is this plus and this minus. When this entity becomes zero, the value of x1 becomes minus b over 2a. The value of x2 also becomes minus b over 2a because this guy is no longer there. So the point I'm trying to make is that when b square minus 4ac is equal to zero, it means that the parabola will have only one x-intercept. It will just be touching the x-axis at one point, right? Something like this. When b square minus 4ac is greater than zero, then obviously we will have two different values of x or two different x-intercepts. Hey folks, hopefully you liked the video and you found it meaningful and useful. Uh, we will take up some more practice questions in our next session. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info.mathletes at gmail.com. See you in the next session.